Good morning, happy Easter and welcome to our Easter celebration today. We're so glad that you were able to access this online and join us as we worship together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. If you're not familiar with our Easter response, well, I'm going to give you the opportunity to try again. But first of all, I want you to go and open your windows, go and open your doors, and I'm going to be listening out for you as we share this celebration together. I'm going to use the words, Alleluia, Christ is risen, and your response is, He is risen indeed, Alleluia. So are your windows open? Doors open? I'm listening for you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray. Risen Lord, we are scattered today, but we meet in your name. We thank you, Jesus, that you promise to meet us where we are. Be with us now as we worship you, as we celebrate you. May we encounter you this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. We start our service with just a few notices. First of all, thank you for your brilliant creations. Hopefully on your screen, you will be able to see some of the crosses that we challenged you to make last week. Lots of people sent their photographs and they made lovely crosses and put them in their windows. So thank you for joining in. It's been a really good thing to be doing over the past week. Also, well done to everybody who took part in our virtual Easter egg hunt yesterday. If you get your responses back to us, we're going to check them all out and hopefully get some prizes in the post to you as soon as we can. We hope you enjoyed it. At six o'clock Sunday, we are going to have a youth get together virtually. And also on Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, we're going to have our regular prayer meeting. If you are someone who would like to be involved or join in with either of those meetings, go and check out our notice sheet. It's published on the Facebook page and on our website and you will find the link that you need for whatever meeting you need to be part of. We hope you can join us in one of those activities. In a few minutes, our Easter reading is going to be brought to us by our very own spectacular Tom McCallum. But first of all, we're going to worship in song. So let's sing together the words, He is risen, Jesus is alive.
mighty angels at his side They will sound the final trumpet From the grave we shall Today's reading will be from Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. And the angel spoke to the woman. Do not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body is lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember why I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Good morning, happy Easter. Alleluia, Christ has risen. And I can hear across Bedworth that echoing response. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Well, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful weather to celebrate Jesus rising from the dead, which is what we do as Christians on this, the most precious, precious day of, our, of the year. So I don't know about you, but one of the things I love about Easter are these bad boys. You can't beat a good Easter egg. And uh, I would ask for confessions now, but who's managed to eat more than one Easter egg so far this morning? I've yet to tuck into mine, but I'm looking forward to it shortly. Um, I don't know about you, but we as a, a family have our Easter traditions. Um, I'm sure you have many. One I love and one we adopted from uh, my brother-in-law's family. Their tradition with the Easter eggs is that they put the Easter egg at the top of the stairs and they let it roll down the stairs. And only once the Easter egg has smashed or cracked or broken are they then allowed to eat it. So Easter Sunday for them involved lots of running up downstairs until these eggs got smashed. 
So however you're going to be celebrating uh, Easter today, I would love just to take a few minutes just to, for us to think a little bit about what is so special about this day. I want us to think about this day as actually very significant because it marks something really important as Christians, that we can find fulfillment in God. We can find fullness of life only in Jesus Christ. Now these Easter eggs that we've got, a little plug again, I love fruit and nut. The thing about these Easter eggs, and it was always a slight disappointment as a child growing up, is that they were empty in the middle. I used to dream about Easter eggs being utterly solid in the middle, completely, uh, com all completely chocolate, because I thought that would be the best thing ever. I'm sure, should have that ever such a thing ever have been invented or made, I'm sure if I got my hands on it, I'd be very ill as a result of it. But actually, uh, for many of us in life, we go through seasons and times when we feel a certain sense of emptiness. And actually, that's why Jesus died on the cross. That's why Jesus rose again. So to mark and show us the way to have fullness in life, we all want to live full and happy lives. And we can do that in Jesus. So I wanted to look at just three really quick things uh, that help the that actually we find the reasons why Easter Sunday and why we find fullness of life through it. So we, th we find fullness of life because we, we don't have to fear death anymore. We know that we get to spend eternity with Jesus. Second, we get fullness of life because G Easter Sunday marks the start of Jesus' kingdom. And it's in Jesus' kingdom we find our purpose and our destiny as humans. You see, our God who created us, who designed us and fashioned us, actually made us for relationship with him. And when we don't have that relationship with Jesus, we, we always feel slightly empty and slightly un, not fully content. And so that's why Jesus came to earth. He died on a cross to build the bridge, the gap between God and us. And he rose on Easter Sunday to mark the start of his kingdom coming and for us to find destiny and purpose in his kingdom. And finally, the third thing that we remember about fullness on Easter Sunday is that actually it's all about Jesus. He shows us he's the only God, the only person that's ever risen from the dead. He's the only God that's walked amongst his people, suffered and died at their hands and rose again. He defeated death. He, he showed us the way. And we remember that Easter, this Easter Sunday it is all about Jesus. So this Easter Sunday, let us rejoice in the fact that Jesus rising from the dead means that we can all find fullness of life. If you're not sure what that looks like, then do get in touch. Do come along to, uh, to our Alpha courses or to Drop us a line in uh, churches. We'd love to chat with you about how you too can find fullness of life through Jesus. Alleluia. Christ is risen. We now come to our time of prayers. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this very special Easter day. We thank you that you are risen. Hallelujah. We praise you too for the beautiful sunshine, for the flowers in our garden and the trees that are shedding their blossom. Lord, at this difficult time, as we are all in lockdown, we commit to you ourselves, our homes and our families. We pray for those who mourn, for those who are sick and struggling, and we commit to you our country. Lord, we know there are a lot of people who are disobeying the rules and we just pray for more commitment to being obedient so that we can look after everybody. We pray for our leaders, for our vicars and our bishops and everyone that is working hard to serve the community and help people understand the importance of you in their lives. We pray too for the government and the cabinet that you would keep them safe and help them to make wise decisions in the weeks ahead. Amen. Dear Lord,
We ask for strength, wisdom and happiness for all teachers, students and support staff, caretakers, janitors, cleaners, invigilators, etc, etc. We also ask for more clarity on the education front about exam results, school work, GCSE and A-level results, university offers and we pray that everyone can continue with their existing plans. We also ask for support for those during, do, being homeschooled or tutored and those children who are still in school as they are the children of essential workers. Lord, in your name, hear our prayer. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. And today we remember Jesus' glorious resurrection and defeat of death. Lord, today we pray for all world leaders and governments as they try to defeat death in their populations from this horrible virus. And we pray for all the medical workers throughout the world as they bring comfort to the suffering. Lord, we praise you for how Christians in all countries are having so many opportunities to witness for you in new ways and help us to be there with them to telling people about the good news of Jesus. Amen. celebration today and we do pray and hope that you enjoyed the service and that you in indeed encountered Jesus at some point along the way. We finish with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. So let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>